people we're back on it again yeah it sends her a wacky ass as if you didn't need to ask and right now i'm just uh, got my roll mark to and tripod satellite set up out for you a few of you guys have said what is it how does it work can i make one can you show me a little bit more detail so hopefully that's what i'm going to do tonight uh, rather than make contacts so yeah had it for quite a long time uh, probably 15 years maybe yeah, it's still going strong so if you want to make one of these or you want to learn a little bit more about it watch this video and we'll uh, hopefully show you how it goes so very easy to construct not too much expense very effective and i've been using mine for a long time so it comprises of a little um, additional boom which i constructed out of some aluminium that's the starting point so let's take a proper look at it and hopefully you can get a few ideas and uh, if not you can always uh, talk nice to me and i might make you one catch you later on uh, the end of the vid enjoy so we're talking about how do we do it so the, the thing that we, we want to look at first is this tripod so what is this tripod well it's just a simple slr camera tripod uh, usual kind of thing the only difference is compared to some of the modern stuff it's quite substantially made so it's made out of aluminium good uh, solid construction just a simple three-legged tripod and uh, what i've done is i've got it extended up fully and then on this part here we've got the adjustable handle so just like any camera you can adjust get the shot and then lock and that's how that works and obviously we can turn relatively easily so that's how that functions on the camera tripod the way that the actual boom is mounted it's on this flip over part which you normally would mount a camera so this particular bolt hole here is where you put your your camera fixing point i've uh, chose to drill all the way through it it's generally a bit of a flimsy plastic thing uh, so i removed that i drilled a hole through it and replaced it with a bolt spinning it around you can see what i've got done i've put a washer in there and it's just a, the back of the bolt so that's a simple easy little job where it's drilled through this plastic hinged bracket and i've used that as my fixing point which is on top of this tripod which obviously does all this movement which is very useful so i can change it from horizontal to vertical and vice versa very easy just by spinning that on that fixing point there so that's the first starting point mounting the uh fi using the fixing point so hopefully you've got that one so a substantial tripod once you get your feed uh, your tripod you've got to think about your antenna so i've chose the arrow mark ii it's the short one and uh, i think it's seven elements on the the four three five we'll say megahertz band and three on the one four six one four five to one four six so not too long uh, the way that these antennas are constructed they come apart really easy so you just simply unscrew the element like that and it's a real quick assembly job so it come pretty quick you can build it up fairly rapid uh, all the elements are the same and it's in two sections so it splits in the middle and that is the connecting section piece which holds the boom together that part's pretty irrelevant about what we're trying to do here i just thought i'd mention that to let you know a little bit more about it on tenor what is quite uh important that i talk about is this connection point there that's the the feeder for the 433 megahertz and that's a separate coaxial feed that i've put on there this antenna comes with a duplex or a standard i've removed that the duplex is generally fitted in the bottom of the tubing just below my compass just in this area here but i've taken that out and i've replaced it with a separate feeder which goes directly to the 435 side and then i've done exactly the same and i've got one in here on the 145 so two feeders running down separately that's my starting point for the uh, setting up of the antenna on the end of them i've got the bnc connectors or you can put on whatever kind of adapters you need for your particular handles because i'm going to run two radios this side so that's what we've done there we've got rid of the duplexer someone asked me if i've got switches i don't have switches just got two separate feeders for two radios and obviously i can change the polarization really quickly using the hinge bracket camera system so that's that so how did i mount it so you've seen the mounting bolt and what have i mounted it to so that's a good question this is a little bit of aluminium i chose it's folded some people call it an angle shape or an angle iron it's actually just a piece of aluminium sheet which i folded up 
uh, quite easily obviously that's my uh, skill uh, which I do for a job and here we have some holes which are at the base of the boom of the arrow mark 2 antenna so these holes I can't quite remember to be fair if I drilled them myself or if they were existing when I got the antenna the actual antenna comes with a foam mount which usually you hold it it's like a handlebar grip off a motorcycle and you usually hold these antennas with this foam mount that simply pulls off you'll find the duplexer and you might find a couple of these holes existing if not a simple job of uh, drilling a hole this side of the, the tubing and this angle bit and then that's that's another hole which I've used to mount this compass which I'll take a bit, bit of a better look at in a second and then you can see I've got a redundant hole there I drill all the way through it and then there is the mounting bolt which is mounted to this piece of aluminium folded metal or angle iron as we're going to call it so I did actually notch a piece out there just to match the actual boom which uh, just use a hacksaw so a bolt all the way through there or actually mine's actually tapped I put a, I got a, fret, a, a tap set and I tapped it with a six millimeter thread so that just screws in on, on a bit of threaded um, three mil wall thick section I'm getting a bit quite technical now but this is what the antenna is made out of pretty much so ignore that we've got a hole through there with a bolt a fixing point we've got another hole through there with another bolt luckily for me I've got a tap and die set so I've just put a thread on there so I can just screw these in so what is this this is the compass I use this when it's horizontally flat to line up the position so let's say we're going to be getting a, pa a pass at that at 100 degrees turn it to 100 degrees get the compass lined up the red into the two lines and then we know we're pointing in that right direction I generally plot the pass before it happens so I'll use the compass to find out where the satellites come in where it's going to be the middle part of the pass with the highest elevation and then I will then um, find the, the loss of the pass so that's mounted on another bolt type thing on the boom of the arrow and we've got another bolt there fixing it to this piece of aluminium so there's the, the next bolt hopefully you can see that so a bolt there securing the boom to the aluminium the two feeders a bit of a cable tie and then up this side here we've got another bolt a second bolt so we've got a bolt that direction and a bolt that direction that's all I've got and it's holding it in place because it's a folded bit of aluminium it doesn't have to be aluminium it can be anything you want it's just aluminium's light so down this side here we have got some homemade cradles this is what I uh, just dropped the, the uh, transmitting Kenwood in that just sits in there and that, that's where I can put the microphone clip it on I've just done that tonight to be fair I've just altered that I sliced it with a pair of tin snips folded it back using some rivets riveted a bit of aluminium which is just bent up uh, roughly just to hold and house the radios a little bit further down we've got the next one which is one for the receiving radio the 470 so these are onto the boom and obviously when you look down it lines up perfectly not that that makes any difference whatsoever it just looks pretty cool and that's about it so that's an extension of a boom the length of that boom homemade is about oh i would say approximately one meter in length that's the aluminium folded metal with a couple of cradles bolted to the fixing point on the tripod which is a substantial slr camera tripod which you can see and we've got the antenna separate coaxial feeds dangling down waiting to be uh, fed to the two radios which i'm going to do next but before i do that i just thought i'd grab this piece of metal that i've bent and folded this is just a bit of old sheet metal that i've picked up and i've drilled a load of holes in it and we've got a folded bit and that could easily be used to do the same job that could bolt onto there and then you could make some kind of adapter or you could cut a piece off and have it as a T at the bottom across with a piece of wood and two handles some cable ties I'm sure you could uh, think of something so that's just a bit of folded metal not uh, aluminium not particularly heavy either that would work quite nicely so that's just something that I thought I'd show you uh, to give you a bit of an idea and of course you won't need an arrow antenna uh, there is a Yagi on that roof there but that would be quite heavy so if I use that one that would uh, probably not be so uh, good to, to move around these arrows are very light that's what I like about them so the handles well here I've got the two handles so I'm using this one which I've had for 20 years still going strong that just drops into this cradle nicely locates in there 
that's my receiving radio and then the next one is the transmitting radio which is the Kenwood and that just drops into there like so I can use the uh, the back the back clip just to show you just to drop that down give it a little bit more stability like so and that just will line up nicely and drop in just like that so the two radios are now housed in their cradles and uh, it, they're, they're quite well balanced so I thought about the, the weight so that the boom is fairly reasonably balanced so all that's left to do now on this particular little bit obviously get the mic but I need to trace the coax so I'll just trace this feeder and uh, make sure I get the right one in the right radio otherwise I'll be uh, struggling so it's as if I could get it wrong so there we go he says so I'll drop that one onto there that's straight on this one I've actually got a little uh, adapter for this particular Kenwood radio which again is an old radio none of this kit's new but it works really good so I'll just use the adapter click that in place and now we have got the separate feeds run into the two uh, dual band antennas so that's the 145 side connected and that is the other side connected to 435 so that's the setup folks all that's left to do is uh, plug the microphone in hang it on its little hanger I'll do that in a second fire up the uh, radios and play some satellites I've actually got it on the aircraft band at the minute but uh, yeah that's that one I can fire that one up and we're ready so we can uh, transmit on this one uplink so I'll put it into the uh, what I generally do is I, I store it in there so I've got it in the memories There's quite a few memories in here I just not go to the satellite stuff there's a few satellite stuff we've got a satellite coming in there now obviously got no idea where it is not got my phone with me don't seem to be that direction So yeah, that's a NOAA weather satellite obviously. So let's have a quick look and see what else we've got here. Got all the NOAAs programmed in, the local repeaters, some SSB satellites. This radio receives SSB, so I'm probably going to try my 817 on an uplink for a couple, if you didn't hear me, I'll try my 817 on an uplink uh, and this on a downlink sometime for some of the SSB sats, that's a plan I'm going to do so right now I'm just going to go to the memory that I've got stored for that's SO50 in there with a 67Hz tone in the memory and over here we've got the International Space Station uh, with a 67Hz tone so that's the radio that I'm going to use to transmit and uh, right now I'll put this microphone in and we'll see whether or not that modified uh, stand microphone bracket I just put on uh, actually works just got that little bit of rubbers in the way I'll just put this over here so we'll try this first so that's going to drop onto there oh yes perfect move that out of the way start again so live business no editing here at the uh, satellite station of M0YKS so we're in business so that should transmit which it does so we've got the microphone set up on its little stand which is just a little mod that I just did it's only on the bracket there nothing spectacular so hope you've enjoyed this uh, quick um, run through the satellite antenna and how uh, versatile and uh, easy uh, really it is and simple so it makes some awesome contacts on the space station on SO50 AO91 when we're getting it uh, the, t the Tevel sats any other FM sats with these two handhelds uh, obviously I can get the SSB reception on that Kenwood one so if we get the 817 out who knows what's possible so yeah hopefully you've enjoyed this video hopefully you got you got something out of that and uh, you're gonna have a go at doing your own if not you can always get something like that that's behind me obviously <laughs> catch you again thanks for watching good luck and uh, hope I work here on the bands real soon